Hello and welcome to the Sutton Anatomy Hub video on the coronavirus. So what is a coronavirus? Anatomy is our business, so let's explore that first. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses which can cause illnesses in animals or humans. Seven of them are known to cause disease in humans. They are actually named after their microscopic anatomy. Corona is Latin for crown, describing the distinct glycoprotein spikes on its outer surface. It is these spikes that attach the virus to the host cell surface and help fuse the viral and host cell membranes together to allow the infection to start. There are also smaller transmembrane proteins which are highly hydrophobic and span the whole membrane. This membrane around the coronavirus is made mainly of phospholipids from cells it has killed, like some kind of weird trophy, which classifies it as an enveloped virus. Thankfully, this makes this particular kind of virus susceptible to heat and soap, making coronavirus easier to deactivate than some non-enveloped viruses. A helical capsid is contained within the viral membrane, inside which the virus stores its genetic material a positive strand RNA. So what is COVID-19? The coronavirus causing the current 2019-20 pandemic is called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or SARS-CoV-2 for short. Rolls off the tongue, I know. The disease it causes has been termed COVID-19, which is much catchier. Sequencing of the genetic material in the virus's capsid has taught us that it is most similar to the genetic material found in bats, suggesting it originated from a bat-borne virus before making the genetic jump to allow it to infect humans. Once the spikes allow the virus to attach to a host cell and their membranes fuse, the virus releases RNA into the cell. This works a bit like instructions for the host cell's nucleus, forcing it to produce copies of the virus called virions. These new virions take parts of the host cell's surface membrane when they bud off. Eventually, when the virus has replicated enough times, the host cell dies and the virions are disseminated. This corresponds with stage one of the infection, an asymptomatic incubation period which is actually causing most of our problems from a prevention point of view. People can still pass on the virus via droplet infection from their breathing, coughing or sneezing without knowing that they're infected because they don't notice any symptoms. In stage two, the non-severe but symptomatic period, the number of virions increases exponentially, resulting in an immune response. That is, the host immune system attempting to eradicate the infection. This works quite well with most of the coronaviruses we know to infect humans, and so only mild symptoms are experienced. Even in SARS-CoV-2, this is usually all most people experience. Some shortness of breath, some cough, loss of smell and fever as their immune system sorts out the problem. But from the data we've gathered so far, Around 15% of people who become infected reach stage 3, a severe respiratory symptomatic stage with high viral load. For 5% of cases, this will become critical, with patients requiring mechanical help to breathe and keep their blood pumping properly. This happens in patients where the immune system does not mount an appropriate response, either doing too little or too much in response to the infection. So what do we do about it? Well, although there are no proven treatments, scientists and clinicians around the world are working on clinical trials to prove or disprove the effectiveness of certain medications against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. We need to study these medications further in large phase 3 trials to find out if they will really be effective. The interventions making the biggest impact at the moment are countries using stringent social isolation techniques preventing those people in stage one of the disease spreading it. We know coronaviruses can survive on surfaces for hours, and so hygiene is really important. 
Remember, those lipid membranes are destroyed by soap.